When we're talking about addressing colorism, we are trying to undo 500 years of systemic miseducation. You know, so while I may feel frustrated and angry when people make comments that are hurtful, that are coloristic, I have to remember that all of us have been exposed to that education before we were even born. And that's gonna take a long time to change and to undo. It's not easy to fight against the grain, to go against the grain in your family, in your culture. When you're taught a certain message over time, it's hard to unlearn that, especially by yourself. It really is an act of full on rebellion to fight against what you've been told your whole life. A discussion that ha has to happen in the broader society before we take it outside, uh, you know, communities of color. These conversations have to happen in schools, in churches, in college, in open settings. There has to be writings about it in the media. Um, we have to have documentaries on it and we have to get society, prominent people in society engaged in talking about it uh, and dispelling it. What have you seen is being done to combat colorism? I think social media has been a huge tool for awareness and communication where before you know, people may have felt isolated if they didn't have other members of the community in the neighborhood or in the community where they live. Now social media has helped people to connect, to network, and to begin engaging in a variety of activities. Whenever I'm around this new generation, I feel inspired. I feel very hopeful because they are actively curious about their history and curious about they themselves as they are naturally. They're more likely to advocate for themselves and that is something that gives me hope. I wanted to see this hope that Dr. Josephine spoke of. So I traveled to Dallas, Texas to visit the May family. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Marlon and Daniela are millennial parents and mental health professionals raising Afro-Latina triplets. When did you notice that your daughters had an awareness of different skin tones and even further differing thoughts or opinions towards different skin tones? One pivotal moment for me, I think, was my mom told me they were taking a bath and um, she had a toy where that sprays water and she put water and soap in it and she said, well, if I spray this, my skin will be lighter. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is, you know, Let's talk about this a little bit deeper. Yeah. So how have you all navigated conversations about skin tone as a multicultural family? Right now, the conversation for them is around what makes me beautiful. And I, I didn't realize we were going to be having this conversation so early in their development. So the reinforcement of the fact that you are beautiful, you are smart, I love the way you Brave. fast, so brave. you're so brave. It was almost as to validate who they were, you needed to validate what their identity, like. what they look like first. Okay, so let's say there is a young girl who may not have parents who are, are so aware, and she, let's say she has darker skin, and she has heard or experienced colorism. How would parents start to counter that now? How, how would you advise a Therapy? mother and father? <laughs> <laughs> a big goal of ours um, as they've been growing up is their positive self-talk. How do you talk to yeah. yourself? When you look at yourself in the mirror um, or when you make a mistake, um, what is it that you're saying to yourself? What's your internal dialogue? You know, obviously I advocate for therapy, but I always, you know, want parents to talk to their children first. We, we tend to talk about them um, like they're not, <laughs> you know, we talk about them in front of them, but they're listening and they see and they hear, and that's your point of information. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Let's talk about it. My last question would be, what do you hope for your daughters as they grow and develop into their unique sense of selves and um, their unique identities? What are your hopes for them? So my hope is for my kids to be respectful, loving, honest, 
and never want to leave my side. <laughs> I come from more from a more realistic point of view. <laughs> my hope is that they're unapologetically themselves, and you know whatever it is that they decide to be, whoever they want to be, do it without apologizing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I left the May family feeling completely inspired. The way they raised their children to see diversity as the norm gave me hope that if more parents heard of their story, maybe diversity can become a social norm too.